Senator Paul. I think uh, many of us were horrified by some of the images that came out of Ferguson. We were horrified by seeing uh, an unarmed man with his hands over his head being confronted by an armored personnel carrier. We're horrified by seeing an unarmed man with his hands over his head being confronted by a man with a drawn assault we uh, weapon. We're horrified by images of tear gas being uh, shot into the yards of people's personal homes who were protesting. One of the fundamental things about America is dissent and the ability to dis have dissent. And it needs to be peaceful. There needs to be repercussions for people who do not act in a peaceful way. But confronting protesters with armored personnel carriers is, is thoroughly un-American. And for 150 years, we've had rules separating the military, keeping the military out of policing affairs. But you sort of obscure that separation if you allow the police to become the military. In FEMA's uh, authorized equipment list, there's actually uh, written descriptions for how the equipment should be used, and it says it's specifically not supposed to be used for riot suppression. Mr. Komoy, uh, is that true, that it's not supposed to be used for riot suppression? And how do you plan on policing that, since the images show us clearly uh, large pieces of equipment that were bought with your grants being used in that riot suppression? Uh, Senator Paul, that or is... protest suppression, rather. That is accurate. Uh, the categories of personal protective equipment that include helmets, uh, ear and eye protection, uh, ballistics, personal protective equipment uh, is a prohibition in the authorized equipment list that is not uh, to be used for uh, riot suppression. And what will you do about it? Uh, we're going to uh, follow the lead of the Department of Justice's investigation uh, about the facts. Uh, we're going to work with the state of Missouri to determine what pieces of equipment uh, were uh, grant funded. Uh, and then uh, we have a range of remedies available to us uh, should there be any finding of uh, noncompliance with those requirements. Uh, those include everything from corrective action plans to ensure it doesn't happen again, uh, recoupment of funds. Uh, so we'll look very closely at the facts, um, but we're going to allow the investigation to run its course uh, and uh, determine what the appropriate remedy is. But it gets back to the whole question. If you're a police force anywhere in the country from Dundee, Michigan of 3,900, which is an MRAP, to 25 other cities under 25,000 that have MRAPs, they think these are for riot suppression. I don't even know what they think they're for in a city of 3,900 people. But many of the police forces actually think that this is what the equipment would be good for, is riot suppression in a big city in an urban area. And you're specifically instructed that it's not for that. And we've talked about, you know, we've had maybe two instances of terrorism. We spent billions and billions of dollars and maybe two instances of terrorism. So I think really by supplying all of this uh, free equipment, much of which is just frankly inappropriate and really shouldn't be on anybody's list of authorized equipment. Uh, Mr. Estevez, in the NPR investigation of the 1033 program, they list that 12,000 bayonets have been given out. Um, what purpose are bayonets uh, being given out for? Senator, uh, bayonets are available under the program. I can't answer what a local police force would need a bayonet. I can for. give you an answer, none. Okay. So uh, what's, the, what's President Obama's administration's position on handing out bayonets to the police force? It's on your list. You guys create the list. You're going to take it off the list. We're going to keep doing it. We are going to look at what we are providing under the administration's review of all these programs. So it's unclear at this point whether President Obama approves of 12,000 bayonets being given out. I would think you can make that decision last week. I think we need to review all the equipment that we're providing, Senator. And as I said, we, the Department of Defense, do not push any of this equipment on any police force. The states decide what they need. My understanding is that you have the ability to decide what equipment is given out and what equipment is not given out. If you decided tomorrow, if President Obama decided tomorrow that mine-resistant ambush protection, 20-ton vehicles are not appropriate for cities in the United States, he could decide tomorrow to take it off the list. You could decide this tomorrow. My question is, what is the administration's opinion on giving out mine-resistant ambush protection, 20-ton vehicles to towns across America? Are you for it or against it? Obviously, we do it, Senator. We're going to look at that. I will also say that we could, I can give you anecdotes where mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles have protected police forces in shootouts. But we've already been told they're only supposed to be used for terrorism, right? Isn't that what the rule is? Our rule is uh, 
for counter drug, which could have been the shootout. I'd have to look at the incident. Uh, uh, counter, you know, counter narcotics, uh, counter terrorism. I guess the point I wish to make is that these are fairly simple problems and common sense applied years ago, you know, we could have fixed these. We're going to fa maybe fix them, although I have my doubts because I've seen rarely anything ever fixed in government. But I would say that we're now responding to a tragic circumstance, you know, in Ferguson to do this. But I think that uh, I, you know, I find these decisions to be very easy to make. You just shouldn't be giving out mine resistant vehicles. Bayonets, there's no excuse. I I don't understand why we have to get together and have a, a study for months to decide bayonets are inappropriate to be giving out. There's, I can't imagine any use for a bayonet in, a, in an urban setting. So uh, really, this is, it's gotten out of control, and this has largely been something that the, the militarization of police is something that has gotten so far out of control, and we've allowed it to descend along with uh, not a great protection of our civil liberties as well. So we, you know, we, we say we're going to do this. It's okay if it's for drugs. Well, look at the instances of what have happened in recent times. The instance in Georgia just a couple of months ago of an infant in a crib getting a percussion grenade thrown in through a window in a no-knock raid. Turns out the infant obviously wasn't involved in the drug trade, but neither was even the infant's family. Happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. No one's even been indicted on this. So really, this is, this is crazy out of control and giving military equipment and with the breakdown of the whole idea of due process, of no-knock raids and not having uh, judges issue warrants anymore, you can see how this gets out of control and people are very, very concerned with what is going on here. And uh, I, I see the response so far to be lackluster and I hope you will do a, a more complete job in trying to fix this. Thank you.